Here's a mutoscope from the International Mutoscope Company. I'm going to take you through the insides and show you how it works. The basic operation of the mutoscope mechanism is as follows. When you drop a penny in, it slides down and wedges itself right here. When you crank the handle, this little finger is going around, riding on this gear and watching for the penny to drop in. When that penny drops, what it does, drop it in, and next time around, it feels that penny. The penny's pushing on this back plate, and as it pushes this plate back, it's pushing this lever forward. This lever goes around to the back side, and I'll show you what's on the back here. It's kind of unique, but it's getting ready to move this lever out, and as the lever moves out, this also is allowed to pivot and raise this up so that this gear engages. Now when that happens, the mutoscope reel will be allowed to spin and this penny is kicked out. But all it took was that one revolution here to set this arm against the back side of this gear and now this is up in place and allows it to turn. If you notice, if I turn backwards, it drops out. There's a fixed lever here, and this is a clutch that's allowed to pivot on this back arm. If I turn it in the right direction, it raises up and engages. If I turn it the wrong way, it drops out. So it won't let me go backwards on a reel. But going frontwards, it raises up into position and what allows it to raise up is the fact that this peg is out of the way and letting that arm go. Here's a close up of me dropping the penny in and that finger coming to get it. A close up shot of the clutch with the fixed arm, if I turn the crank in the right direction, it's allowed to raise up. If I turn it in the wrong direction, it drops out. So this gear is either engaged or not engaged. Shot from a different angle for you. You can see that as I crank, I continue to turn this main gear and back. If I zoom in real close, watch the tip of this as I get close to the end of the reel. It comes up upon a groove, boom, and it drops out. So when it hits that cup, it allows this lever to fall back into the at rest position and if I look at what that lever is doing around this front side as the lever got pulled in it caused this peg to pull on this lever and pull this backwards which forces this down and causes this to rotate and rotates that down so that the gears are disengaged. That's how when I continue to crank, I'm not watching my movie anymore. It won't roll because this is down and disengaged even though I'm cranking in the right direction. It won't go up and engage. This worm gear here will not go up and engage that until this U-shaped arm gets pushed out of the way and allows this lever to come up and allows this to roll back up again. Now what's clever about the way that this gear operates is that as we approach the end of a reel and we fall into this cup, you actually notice that the cup dropped back down in this direction. And if I put another penny in, 
which I'm going to do now. Put a penny in and start cranking. You'll see that this lever, you'll hear it click twice. Once, twice. It actually goes up onto two steps, or up onto a second step, and that second step doesn't have this cup going into it. In other words, we go past that cup on the second step. So now I'm watching my movie. And what will have to happen is that arm has to get back onto the lower step. And it does that right here. It falls off the higher step and then right there we have a little ledge and it pushes it back out. Now it's riding on that lower step which is in line to fall in when the cup comes around. Here comes the cup, movie over. For the lighting, there is an earth ground here, wasn't originally there, but I'm adding it and I will attach it to the frame when I put it back into the case. But we have 110 volts hot and neutral that comes in. The hot comes down to a screw there and that is taking electricity up and over, resting on this plate. When you start the movie rolling and the pages are allowed to push this backwards, pushing back on it causes this pin to contact the plate where 110 volts is waiting. And then that 110 volts gets transferred along this pin, through this arm, up this spring, and over around here to a wire, that wire right there, which is going to the light bulb. And then the other side of the light bulb has got neutral. So causing that to close, and there is light. I would also highly recommend that if you are rewiring a mutoscope, wherever this cord comes in to the machine, you want to put an inline fuse in there because there's no protection at all in case anything here shorts out. You'd have a real uh, shock and fire hazard on your hands. So get yourself an inline fuse and put it in the cord. Here's the mechanism put back into the housing. And what I decided to do was go ahead and rewire it again. I installed a cloth cord so it would be correct with the period. And my fuse is right here. When you close the switch, it comes on. Now the reel is reinstalled. And when you crank the reel so that it pivots that weight far enough, the light comes on and you can watch the movie play. Until you get to the end, which it's right at the end. So I'll show you the complete movie through the uh, regular viewfinder that the patron looks through. And that's it.